Our discussion will focus on the learning competency and enumerate the lines of evidence that support plate movement. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to 1. Describe continental drift theory. Number 2. Trace the geologic formation of continents in the continental drift theory. And number 3. Explain evidences that support continental drift theory. Everybody have seen the map of the world. But if you will take a closer look at the shapes of each landmass, you will notice that they seem to fit together like a puzzle. That if you are going to put each continent close to each other, you will actually create a giant landmass. Let's say for example the continents of South America may seem to fit together with Africa. Can you see it? This observation actually led to one of the theories that explain Earth movement known as the Continental Drift Theory. This theory was proposed by Alfred Budgener. He laid out his case in his book The Origin of Continents and Ocean. He proposed a theory that about 200 million years ago, the continents were once one large landmass. However, Wegener could not explain what force was driving the motion of the continents. His theory was not accepted by the scientific community until 1965 when the theory of plate tectonics was published. According to Wegener, all continents formed a single continental mass. This supercontinent was named Pangea or Pangei, which means all Earth. This was surrounded by a mega ocean called Panthalassa meaning all water. Wegener argued that around 200 million years ago, this supercontinent Pangea started to break into two smaller supercontinents, called Laurasia in the north and Gondwanaland in the south during the Jurassic period. These smaller supercontinents broke into the continents and this continent separated and drifted apart since then. The illustration shows how the landmasses drifted in the last 250 million years. To support his claim, Wegener cited evidences of continental drifting. First is the continental jigsaw puzzle, the most visible and fascinating evidence that these continents were once one in their shapes. If you will cut out pictures of each continent and bring them close together, you will see that the edge of continent surprisingly matches the edge of another. South America and Africa fit together. India, Antarctica, and Australia match one another. And Eurasia and North America complete the whole continental puzzle in the north. Next is the evidence from fossils. Fossils are preserved remains or traces of organisms from the remote past. Fossils have unique distribution patterns in some parts of the world. Mesosaurus, Sinonathus, Listosaurus, and Glossopteris are the notable ones. Fossilized leaves of an extinct plant Glossopteris were found in 250 million years old rocks. These fossils were located in the continents of South Africa, Australia, India, and Antarctica, which are now separated from each other by wide oceans. The large seeds of this plant could not possibly travel a long journey by the wind or survive a rough ride through the ocean waves. Fossils of Mesosaurus, a freshwater reptile, was found in the eastern coast of South America and western coast of Africa. According to Wegener, while Mesosaurus roamed the land, these continents were connected, but after they become extinct, the continents were torn apart. Rocks also provide evidence that continents drifted apart. Rock formations in Africa line up with that in South America as if it was a long mountain range. Folded Cape Mountains of South America and Africa line up perfectly as if they were once a long mountain range. Another evidence is the glacial striations. Glaciers can only be found in cold places of the Earth like the North and South Pole of the Earth. Something interesting about glaciers is that they move, and when they move over the rock beneath, 
they leave evidence in the form of scratch called glacial striation. In the present day, tropical rainforests of South America and Africa have glacial striations. This means that these plates were not always in their warm equatorial regions like they are now. They were once down in the South Pole where they have been cold enough to form glaciers. And we have the coal deposits. Coal beds were formed from the compaction and the composition of swamp plants that lived millions of years ago. These were discovered in South America, Africa, Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and even in Antarctica. The current location of Antarctica could not sustain substantial amount of life. If there is substantial quantity of coal in it, it only means that Antarctica must have been positioned in a part of the Earth where it once supported large quantities of life. This leads to the idea that Antarctica once experienced a tropical climate, thus it might have been closer before to the equator. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching. Kick. Hey, hey.